America. This, in the language of John Adams, is a day of celebration. It ought, said he, to be celebrated with pomp, parades, shows, games, bells, bonfires, and illumination from one end of the continent to the other. And if the day was worthy of this before, is it not now eminently proper that we should commemorate it as the day of deliverance by reason of events that have recently transpired? We rejoice to know that a brighter and better day has dawned upon us. The dark cloud of war that has hovered over our land has been broken. For four long years, the dark cloud of war has been suspended over our land, and almost daily we saw the flashes of its lightning, we heard its deep-toned thunder, and we felt the big pattering drops of blood that told of the fury of the tempest. But now that which threatens to divide and destroy the nation has itself been destroyed, and the Union of States not only remains intact, but the flag symbolizing that union floats today over every section of our land without one oh, single point. star erased. Ah, ah. That's what I'm the speech of the deeds of valor performed at Antietam, or in Fredericksburg, or in Gettysburg, would require a more skilled orator than he who stands before you today. Suffice it to say that those deeds of valor were not performed by men trained in the art of war. No, they were citizen soldiers who left their homes for their country's cause and who had performed their duty in a manner to challenge the wonder and admiration of all mankind. These hosts of veterans you see just over here deserve our special thanks. Gentlemen, yes. Justice and depriving them of a large part of the glory of their victory. If I did not say here that while we must regard the soldiers of the South as mistaken and misguided men who listen too closely to the guidance of overly zealous leaders, that they too possess the heroism and determination and endurance that marks the American. connected to the war presents itself. Shall the process of Southern Reconstruction follow the path of mercy and magnanimity, or shall it be by the rocky and difficult track of malice and vengeance? No, no, never. never. President Lincoln, President Lincoln, whose memory the American people will cherish for his kindness of heart, generosity of spirit and his unselfish love for his country, and whose death by assassin's bullet less than three short months ago, the American nation must regard as its single greatest Where national calamity, had a phrase that can readily be applied to the subject of Southern Reconstruction. I need hardly remind you that President Lincoln's words were, with malice toward none, with charity for all. This war, so terrible in its consequences, has been for us a stern schoolmaster. But if the lessons taught have been learned, the last four years of suffering and bloodshed will not have been in vain. I thank you.